Hi, I'm Jennifer Lopez, and we're gonna talk about some of the scenes from my new music and visual experience. This is me now. What you looking for? It's not out there. So we had Gilbert come and play the rebound guy, and that's me painting Libra there. We really had a lot of discussion on what sign to put. We didn't want anybody to think it was anyone specific, so we picked Libra. Stop! Stop what? Huh? You see, it's like a whole glass house, because the whole idea was that when you are in a rebound kind of relationship that you're living in a glass house and it can break at any minute, doesn't have a good foundation. You haven't been on your own long enough to get back to who you are. And this string part that comes in is obviously kind of like a metaphor for toxic relationships and how you keep trying to get away from each other, but you're tethered in this kind of dysfunctional way and you keep snapping back together and back and forth until you somehow can break it. And this is where she kind of has to face herself. Realize that she kind of has to hit rock bottom there. There's many times when I found myself in the bathroom in a similar situation, wondering like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> I think a lot of us have had that moment until you just can't do it anymore. And the whole thing starts falling apart. Filming the scene, it was funny. This part of the movie was, for me, it's like things that I hadn't looked at for almost ever, you know, and kind of, looking at them and acknowledging them and saying, yeah, that happened and that hurt and I don't ever want to be there again. And uh, so to film it was really kind of, it was kind of a, a cathartic experience in a way. It was definitely good to have that, have toxic relationships be represented, represented in the story of kind of hopeless romantics because I think it's very real that in trying to find love outside yourself all the time, you get into situations where, you know, are not the healthiest for you in search of something that you want so badly. Thanks for joining us. Well, we have a new face tonight. So this is Broken Like Me. We wanted to do a Love Addicts Anonymous meeting because I think every hopeless romantic at some point in their life thinks maybe they're a love addict or your friends do anyway. When I was little, I used to share a room with my sister, and um, I used to be so jealous of her because she used to she used to sleep so peacefully, like a rock. And I just used to lie there awake, thinking, "How does anybody sleep that way?" I wrote this little speech. I remembered something my son had said to me when he was a baby about how his heart never went to sleep and how he had trouble sleeping. And I remembered being little and not being able to sleep and wondering, you know, if there was some correlation that I could write here about being a hopeless romantic and your heart not being able to ever rest. I felt like it, it hit the right notes for the character at this point in time. So here I am, 10 years and three divorces later. <laughs> I let that shot sit in editing and then the awkward laugh. There's a little bit of shame you see in her voice there. But now I think, maybe it was just me. And it kind of hits her like a ton of bricks. There was nobody else that was broken, it was just her. And I tried to be honest, but it made me feel weak. And when I think about it, it brings me to my there was so much good choreography here. Tassandra choreographed this. And I remember when I watched the first time, I was like, I can't do that. I've never danced contemporary in my life. And she was like, yes, you can. And you're going to. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Two babies at home. Mama had to be strong. In a battle for love. In a war of my own. And I tried to be 
And I love some of the choreography. It felt slightly out of control, but then there was this beautiful uniformity and you can see in some of the shots, everybody's so in sync, but in their own kind of pain. Covered in scars, now this is me. And I love this pose right here. This is a, what I call the this is me now pose. It's like, this is who I am. And at the end, I love, they were like, do you want to fix your hair? I was like, no, I want it to be crazy. I want it to, it to feel like just what it says. That she's broken and she knows it. And she's a mess and she needs to do something about it. It was actually a really beautiful day of filming. I don't know, it just felt very right. <laughs> like this was a part of the story that I had never really admitted to anybody in the world. Myself, I actually recognize that there's a part of me that has been broken or that is broken and it was a very vulnerable thing but it was also there's like there's a strength in kind of just revealing the truth and having nothing to hide instead of trying to kind of always put up airs of being like perfect and I have it all together and everything's fine it's like no actually it's been really hard this has been a really hard journey my personal life and uh it was a different way of kind of expressing that. You have to have the moment where you realize that the only person who can fix you is you. So this is the kind of our dancing in the rain scene. I think people will liken it to singing in the rain, but really it's a dancing in the rain scene because um, one of those phrases that I always loved was, you have to learn how to dance in the rain. She's kind of gotten to a place in the film where she's okay being on her own and then the hummingbird shows up and tells her, don't give up, don't give up on love. This scene originally wasn't at the end of the film. We intended it to be right after Broken Like Me. And then we went back and looked at it and I was like, it was so happy that it felt like the end of the movie. You really felt like there was a washing away of all the past things that had happened and all of the stuff she'd been through. And she learned that life is not all hearts and flowers and fairy tales and like she said, but that there's something beautiful about being able to dance when it's raining. the worst scene to shoot. It was obviously freezing cold water. And just for it to show like that, it was like buckets. It was so heavy, the water, that I could barely at times move my legs. And this was something that we added at the end when we put it at the end of the movie. We had Joe come out. And this is my favorite line in the whole movie. Joe. Never give up. It's just kind of like a classic old Hollywood line in a way. A perfect ending to that type of scene. 